Paz Cristo, hermanos. Praise Lord Church. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. We always look forward to worshiping the Lord alongside with you. And even though we're separated by a few miles, we can still feel the presence of the Lord together. And that's been apparent from everything we've heard from you all and the experiences that we've had. There where you are, I see them. I, I, I quiera que ustedes estén esta mañana, les voy a invitar que vamos a levantar las manos, abrir nuestras bocas y adorar el nombre del Señor Jesucristo porque Él está presente en cada hogar esta mañana. Señor Jesucristo, te damos toda la honra y la gloria porque tú eres fiel, Señor, pero aún más que fiel porque tú, Señor, sigues dándonos la luz, sigues, Señor, mostrándonos la, el camino cada día y tu misericordia, tu gozo, tu amor sigue, Señor, llenándonos cada mañana y cada noche, Señor. Te pedimos que tú nos traiga, Señor, Uh, la, la libertad de levantar las manos, de, de, de sentir tu misericordia, tu, tu gracia. Y también, Señor, que tú, Señor, use a tus siervos a traer la, las palabras, Señor, que nosotros necesitamos en este día. Tu nombre oramos. Amén.
Hermanos, paz de Cristo. En esta mañana uh, me siento feliz, alegre, gozoso por el grande privilegio que Dios me da de dirigirme a, dirigirme a ustedes una iglesia preciosa, hermosa y una de las cosas eh, que estoy viendo es que estamos muy unidos. Doy gracias a Dios porque eh, durante 24 horas eh, tuvimos la cadena de oración, participaron los ministros, los varones, las dorcas y los jóvenes. I'm very proud of the young people that, that participated in, in the uh, prayer chain. Y alabo a Dios por ello. Ese es un gran triunfo, hermanos, que Dios nos está bendiciendo. Dios nos está uniendo. Y esto ya va de salida. Esta, esta situación está mejorando. Y pronto regresaremos al templo para alabar, adorar al Señor Jesucristo. Hermanos, vamos a tener una fiesta. Un pueblo en fiesta de gratitud a nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Pero mientras tanto, invito a la iglesia a seguir orando, seguir ayunando, ¿verdad? Eh, eh, los padres de familia, eh, reúnanse, recójanse con sus, con sus eh, ¿verdad? Su familia, eh, lean un salmo, oren por, su, por sus ustedes mismos, por toda la iglesia, eh, oren por la necesidad de los enfermos que hay. Y esto, hermanos, va, va a ser en gran, va a resultar en un gran avivamiento espiritual en la iglesia de Sion. Eh, les invito, hermanos, a que eh, ayunemos por 21 días. Cada uno de ustedes tome un día en el cual va a ayunar por semana. Y yo sé que, hermanos, va a haber bendiciones eh, grandes para esta hermosa iglesia. En este día les quiero hablar acerca del gozo del Señor. Y leyendo Filipenses 4.4, dice, regocijaos en el Señor siempre. Otra vez digo, regocijaos. La iglesia de Filipos fue fundada por el apóstol Pablo. Y leemos en Hechos capítulo 16 que Pablo llega a esta ciudad y miramos que los primeros convertidos es Lidia, la vendedora de púrpura y también el carcelero. Pablo escribe esta carta a esta iglesia cuando él era prisionero en Roma. Y notamos que esta carta, eh, hermanos, exhibe la ternura, el amor, el calor que Pablo siente por esta iglesia. Esta iglesia... Era, tenía su prominencia porque era la única iglesia que había mandado ofrendas al apóstol Pablo. Entonces había una cercanía, una intimidad entre Pablo y esta iglesia. Y eh, cuando él escribe esta carta, ¿verdad? es una carta muy hermosa, ¿verdad? en el cual ¿verdad? se mira el acercamiento que hay de, de Pablo a esta congregación. Pero notamos algo en esta carta. Miramos, hermanos, el gozo dominante o el gozo triunfante que se puede ver en el corazón de Pablo. A pesar de Pablo, a pesar de que Pablo estaba, hermanos, aleluya, en un lugar frío, en el calabozo, hermanos, eh, lleno de, 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 de insectos, ¿verdad? En la escasez. Pero dentro de él, hermano, salía un gozo, un gozo por el Señor. Y entonces en esta carta, él les, les invita a sus hijos espirituales que también ellos se gocen en el Señor siempre. Y es interesante ver que en esta carta, ¿verdad? Se, repite, se repiten las palabras gozo o regocijo 12 veces. Porque el gozo es importante para nosotros. Ahora, cuando Pablo escribe esta carta, él, hermanos, se profundiza en las bases del gozo. ¿Por qué es que él sentía tanto gozo? ¿Por qué es que el, el cristiano eh, de, de su interior, hermanos, debe de haber el gozo? Es que el gozo del cristiano, hermanos, no depende de de las emociones, no depende 
de las circunstancias externas, sino que el, el gozo nuestro viene de lo interior. El gozo nuestro, hermanos, aleluya, gloria a Dios, no depende de las circunstancias, no importa, ¿verdad? A las circunstancias adversas como el sufrimiento, la persecución, las enfermedades o la escasez, sino que el gozo verdadero nuestro como hijos de Dios, hermanos, se encuentra en el Señor Jesucristo. A él sea la honra y la gloria. Y por eso Jesucristo dijo, el que cree en mí, como dice en la Escritura, de ese interior correrán ríos de agua viva. ¿Y qué, qué es lo que el Señor decía con esto? ¿Qué, ¿Qué es lo que él estaba tratando de decir? ¿Verdad? Lo que él decía, hermanos, es que nosotros estamos basados en él, en su soberanía, en su poder. En su misericordia, en su sabiduría, en, en su santidad. Aleluya, nuestro Dios, hermanos, es un Dios ilimitado. Es un Dios todopoderoso. Entonces, nuestro gozo está basado en Él. Y nada de lo que está pasando en este mundo, esta situación, hermanos, precaria, eso no debe de afectar nuestro gozo, porque nuestro gozo está basado en la señoría del Señor Jesucristo y eso es importante y por eso el profeta Habacuc miramos en el libro de Habacuc que al principio uh, del libro de Habacuc Habacuc en él uh, había de dar frustración por todo lo que él miraba él miraba verdad desobediencia él miraba idolatría injusticia como los ricos Hermanos, los ricos oprimían a los pobres. Y miraba mucha, mucha, ¿verdad? De mucha desveniencia en el pueblo. Pero al fin, al fin del libro, cuando él termina, está terminando su libro, ¿verdad? Él dice, cuando él examina todo el panorama, dice, con todo yo me alegraré en Jehová y me gozaré en el Dios de mi salvación. Así como Bakú, nosotros los hijos de Dios debemos, hermanos, de, 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 de estar igual que Bakú, en la misma disposición, aleluya, en el mismo terreno que nuestra salvación está en nuestro Señor Jesucristo. A Él sea la honra y la gloria. Ahora, Pablo en, en la epístola de los filipenses, él se gozaba por varias cosas. Y una de las cosas por las cuales eh, eh, su gozo emanaba es que él se gozaba de haber conocido al Señor Jesucristo. Nosotros hemos conocido al Señor Jesucristo. Aleluya. Y en nosotros debe de haber ese gozo. Porque lo hemos conocido al Señor a través de su poder. Aleluya. ¿Cómo? Porque Él nos transformó, nos limpió, nos lavó. Aleluya. A pesar de que nosotros estábamos llenos de pecado, de suciedad, de todas maneras, Él nos tomó, nos, la, nos lavó y nos hizo sus hijos. ¿Por qué? Por su misericordia y su amor. Hemos conocido de una manera íntima al Señor Jesucristo. Y sabemos que Él es el Dios verdadero. Porque cuando estamos en las dificultades, nosotros levantamos las manos, clamamos a Él y Él nos responde. Él nos ayuda, Él nos envía la paz, la tranquilidad, a la tra hermanos, eh, todo lo que necesitamos y sobre todo el gozo, el gozo del Señor en nuestra fuerza. El gozo del Señor, hermanos, es lo que nos, nos, nos lleva hacia adelante y por eso nosotros nos gozamos de haber conocido al Señor Jesucristo. Y Pablo, ¿verdad?, se gozaba porque él había padecido por el Evangelio. Y él, él, él hermanos, también había, ¿verdad?, predicado el Evangelio. Y por eso, por eso decía, y no me avergüenzo del Evangelio, porque es poder de Dios para salvación a todo aquel. Pero una de las cosas por las cuales había gozo en Pablo es que él, Hermanos, se gozaba porque la venida del Señor Jesucristo estaba a las puertas. 
y él lo menciona muchas veces a través de sus cartas y por eso a los filipenses les dice en el capítulo, capítulo 3 del 20 al 21 dice más nuestra ciudadanía está en los cielos de donde también esperamos al Salvador, al Señor Jesucristo, el cual transformará el cuerpo de la mediación nuestra para que sea semejante al cuerpo de la gloria suya, por el poder con el cual puede también sujetar a sí mismo todas las cosas. Esa es nuestra esperanza. Nos gozamos en el Señor siempre porque nuestra esperanza es, hermanas, que un día de estos, el Señor Jesucristo vendrá por su iglesia, vendrá por nosotros. Aleluya, somos un pueblo especial, somos un pueblo con una grande esperanza. Porque sabemos que Él viene por nosotros, su iglesia. Y sabemos que pronto, hermanos, estaremos en nuestra patria celestial. Y por eso las cosas de este mundo no nos aplastan. Las cosas de este mundo no nos entristecen, las cosas de este mundo no nos fatigan, las cosas de este mundo no nos, no nos enferman, hermanos, porque un día de estos, y ese día está cerca, aleluya, se tocará la trompeta y el Señor Jesucristo descenderá del cielo y nos llevará a la gloria, al Señor sea la alabanza, de ahora y para siempre les invito ahora hermanos que cierren sus ojos vamos a agradecer a Dios por su palabra y vamos a orar hermanos por toda la iglesia por todas las familias de esta hermosa congregación vamos a orar hermanos también por los doctores por las enfermeras que están enfrente de la batalla aleluya vamos a orar hermano Lío también señor el doctor Lío que él está también Hermanos, ese es su trabajo, atender a los pacientes. Vamos a orar por el presidente, por el gobierno. Aleluya. Vamos a orar por todos los enfermos en todas partes del mundo. Vamos a orar, hermanos, por las personas que en esta iglesia, las almas, las están oyendo la palabra de Dios. Y que pronto, hermanos, pase esta situación y que pronto estemos juntos alabando a Dios. Únanse conmigo, Señor Padre Celestial. Mi alma te alaba, mi alma se goza en ti. Señor, aleluya, mi gozo depende de ti. Señor, aleluya, yo pido, Señor, que dentro de esta iglesia, de esta congregación, el gozo del Señor no me engúe, sino que el gozo del Señor, aleluya, siga aumentando, porque nosotros somos un pueblo muy especial con una grande esperanza y en nos, dentro de nosotros corre ese río de agua viva. Te pido por cada miembro de esta congregación, te pido por cada familia, cada matrimonio, por las viudas, por las madres solteras, por cada uno de los miembros de esta iglesia. Te pido por las almas que están oyendo tu palabra cada semana. Gracias, Señor. Y también te pido, aleluya, por los doctores, las enfermeras que están al, al filo, Señor. Están enfrente de la batalla, Señor. Aleluya. Te pido por ellos, Señor. Aleluya. Que los bendigas, mi hijo lío. Que los bendiga, los proteja siempre. Aleluya. Te pido por el presidente por su equipo, te pido por todos los enfermos en todas partes del mundo que están sufriendo, Señor, en esta situación. Envía tu palabra de poder y de sanidad, aleluya, porque en ti está el poder en tus manos. Te pido, Señor, que sigas bendiciendo esta iglesia, que esta iglesia siga orando, que esta iglesia siga ayunando, aleluya, porque sabemos que pronto va a pasar esto y regresaremos a la iglesia, para alabarte, adorarte y vamos a tener una grande fiesta en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén. Hermanos, Dios les bendiga. Good morning, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here with you again. And, and as the pastor said in Spanish a little while ago, it's beautiful to see the church coming together and to do things that we haven't really done ever. Uh, I think that The method that we're using right now is different, but it's beautiful, and it's been wonderful to see everyone come together. And as he mentioned, 
the men's apartment, the woman's apartment, and uh, and the youth. The youth came together and stepped up to to be a part of that prayer chain last night, and I was encouraged. A lot of times, a young person would go ahead and and hand off that next person. They would say, "You're up next. You're up next." I didn't see all the text messages because uh, a few of you guys wanted to take those early morning spots. So when I woke up in the morning before I prayed, I saw those messages, and that was pretty awesome. They were up all night long praying and fasting for our country and for our church and for the unity of our church. So it was it was really beautiful to see that. And I thank the Lord for allowing us to be a part of that. We're going to go ahead and open up our Bibles to the book of John, Gospel of John, chapter 10. And we're going to take a look at verse 11 and, and perhaps 12. If you go, ahead, if you found it, go ahead and wave into the screen so I can see your hand. All right, looks like you guys have it, right? Yes, we have that kind of technology, so we we can see into your homes right now. Just kidding, that's only Google. That's not us. But John chapter ten, verse eleven, and we're gonna go ahead and read it. It says, "I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep." The hired hand, in verse 12, the hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees a wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. The wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Today I'd like to speak to you a few minutes about the fact that we are under the shepherd's care. If you can go ahead and tell your neighbor that. Look, look at them and say, neighbor, brother, sister, mother, father. Cousin, you are under the shepherd's care. Pray with me for a moment. Lord God, we come before you and we thank you for this word. Thank you for your mercy and your love and your salvation. And I thank you, Lord, for this wonderful, uplifting word that you presented me with yesterday. And I'm going to ask you, Lord, I'm going to ask you, Lord, that you go ahead and you transmit this hope and this joy you've given me to my brothers and sisters out there and even my friends that are tuning in maybe for the first time, that you allow them to see your love and your joy and your mercy and the abundance of blessings you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what this means for us. What does it mean that we're speaking about shepherds and about sheep this morning? Well, it all goes back to the most important decision that we could ever make in this life. The best decision that you could ever make in life is giving your life to Christ. There are a lot of decisions you can make. And ones that are very important, but there's only one decision that can affect you in this life and the life to come in such a powerful way. Giving your life to Christ is the best decision that you will ever make. The Bible says that when you give your life to Christ, it sets many things in motion. First, your sins are forgiven. The debt of your past, the debt of your failures is paid for in full. Your future is secure in him. Your position changes. You go from sinner to son or daughter of Christ. Your status is transformed. The Bible says that now, Paul says, we sit, we are seated in high places with the Lord. We are seated in heavenly realms. We are no longer just citizens of this place that we live in called earth, but we are pilgrims passing through because we are seated with the Lord in high places. And the Bible says in John 1, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And his name is Jesus, amen, which were born not of blood, not, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. If you have believed and trusted in Christ, if you've given your life to God, and he is your Savior and your Lord, you are now a child of God. We know how fragile our lives are. We know, we understand now how temporary our jobs can be and we know how things can change in an instant, not just in our homes, but our, our communities, our society and the world and, and the countries abroad, of course. Everything can change in a moment. And in moments of pressure, danger and anxiety, people really do become like sheep. And you've seen this if you've gone out to Costco, or you've gone to any large establishment, you can see people really do become like sheep whenever they see like toilet paper or water, right? They all start just flocking. So you can see that people really are like sheep. And I am grateful that I have a great shepherd in Christ. 
I'm grateful that I don't have to run around and fall in pits and cry looking for help because I know that I trust in the great shepherd who is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I have been moved many times by Psalms 23, and I want to go ahead and look at that again with you this morning, Psalms 23. And it's a psalm of David, but I learned a lot about this by looking at this this weekend, and, and I had the help of, of others that have researched it for years and other pastors that I listen to and, and, and other, um, other resources. But Psalms 23 is, is deeper, and it, and it just grows deeper and deeper in my heart. It's a psalm of David, and it starts off in verse 1 as saying this, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. Other versions say, um, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. It means I lack nothing, I have everything I need. As, it, and it, as, as we look deeper at Psalms 22 through 24, it really is a trilogy. You guys have seen Star Wars before, whether you like the tril first trilogy or second trilogy better. Uh, or the third trilogy now, right? There's nine parts, if you don't count the uh, standalone films. But the Word of God is the one that actually started with putting things in motion in that way. And nothing is better than the original. And Psalms 22 through 24 really are a trilogy, and we're going to talk more about that as we go along. Psalms 22 speaks of the Lamb that was slain of the lamb that was a sacrifice for our sins, of the crucified Christ that paid the price for our, our sins. But now in chapter 23 of Psalms, that lamb is risen to become our shepherd. That lamb now looks over us and watches over us. He has taken the place of our great shepherd. David, who wrote the Psalms, was a person that saw the hand of, of God move over his life. And he could say, the Lord is my shepherd. He was saying it with certainty, with conviction, with, with boldness. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Isn't that wonderful to say that? The Lord Jesus is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Verse 2, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. The shepherd offers us security. He offers me peace. I don't have to worry about the drought that may be taking place around the world or in other regions. I don't need to be anxious about the violent waterfalls that can trouble you or, or cause you to stress because the good shepherd leads us to his living water. Amen. He leads us into his living water. He is living water. He is the one that gives us a source of all that is good and pure. We can drink directly from his well. Amen. Verse 3, he refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. The Lord gives us rest and new life continually. I think that one of the reasons I like going out to eat, I don't know about you guys, I like going out to eat because I can get refills. And don't act like you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm talking about. You guys love refills. I see you guys at Costco sometimes getting two and three refills, even though it says there free refill. It's singular. I see you guys. But I love refills. And you know what? The, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that started this whole refill business. But he refill, refills us continually. It's something that happens daily, even uh, two or three or four times a day he refills us he refreshes our soul he gives us new life we know that certain times and situations tend to dry us out right you guys know what i'm talking about you get stressed out you get worried you get frustrated by situations by just life itself but if you go back to your shepherd if you go back to his arms of love and mercy and tenderness he refills you he fills you up again you're new again you are replenished with his life, with his affection. He guides us the right way to go, not because of who we are, but because who he is. Aren't you glad that God loves you because of who he is and not because of you, who you are or because who I am? Because if I had to depend on who I was, I would not deserve any part of God. But because he loves us, because of who he is, we have all that we need. And it says in verse 4, even though I walk through the valley Oh, through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And this is what I learned a lot from studying today. I'm going to get into it. But it says, he's, he's speaking about fear here. And he says that, the psalmist says that there is a perpetual fear that men live with. 
Mankind lives with a perpetual fear knowing that death is going to come one day. They know that they will have to pass from this life to another place. And a lot of folks are turning in or tuning into the news daily to find out how many more people died today, how many more people died yesterday. And it's an endless news cycle, and people get sucked into negativity, into fear and anxiety. But friend, if you have the Lord as your shepherd, you don't walk in the valley of the shadow of death, but you live in the newness of life. Can you say that right now? Say, I walk in life. I don't walk in death. Even Jesus told the Pharisees that. He said, they asked him about death and he said uh, he says don't you know that god is a god of the living not of the dead can you raise your hands right now and say hallelujah my god is the god of the living my god is the risen christ and he's talking about here about how you and i can rest and not fear evil his rod and staff comfort him they comfort us and i didn't know this and i didn't take the time before to look it up but the rod and the staff served very distinct purposes. The rod was to protect the sheep from the enemy. The rod was almost like the shape of a nightstick, and they would carry it under their cloak. And any time the enemy would come out, it could be a bear, a lion, or a chupacabra, but it would come against the lamb or the sheep, and the shepherd would go and just swat that thing out of the way. David did it many times and defeated many many violent animals, then don't you know that our God is more than capable to defeat any enemy? In fact, the Word of God says that he has already overcome, so his rod protects us. And what does a staff do? The staff is actually for us. It brings us back to the right place. It brings us back to the right path. You know, it's like sheep. You and I can get a little carried away, and we can start walking off to the right or left. We can fall in ditches. Well, there's a reason why there's a little a crook at the end of the staff. That was the place over the head of the, of, the, of, the, of the lambs to bring them back, to bring them back to the place of, com of safety. And many times those little creatures would walk into a ditch so the, the shepherd would use it to pull them out. I think you and I, I think you and I need to be pulled out of the ditches of negativity sometimes, amen? I think we need to be brought back to our Savior side. And the Word of God says, that sometimes he will need to tug on us gently to remind us that it's his will and not our own. Amen? Verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. This shows us that the, that the heart of the Lord is always for us. He provides for us. Even while our surroundings might appear to be overwhelming to others, I'm going to say that again. Even when our, over, our surroundings might, might seem overwhelming to others, the Lord sets the table for us. He provides for us. He anoints us. He fills us with joy. It is such a triumph when a child of God can be joyful in circumstances that are troubling. And that's what the pastor mentioned a little, mo a little while ago. It is wonderful when you and I can stand up and say, praise God, because I believe in a wonderful God. And I'm not praising God because of what's going on around me in this second, but I'm praising God and I'm worshiping God for who he is and for what he's done already and for what he's going to do. We have access to joy and to peace and to victory in the moments. Notice when we just lift up our hands and we praise and worship his name. If you want to do that right now, you will be filled with joy you will be filled with peace you will be filled with a sense of quietness over your soul and that's what we're talking about this morning we can declare that we have joy even even in a turbulent setting verse 6 as we get ready to close this up surely your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever he is good the Bible also says that God is love. This is what we have in our lives. That's what we have access to, his goodness and love. We seek these things all the days of our lives. He told us in his word that he would prepare a place for us in eternity, and this is what we're looking forward to. We are looking towards eternity. We aren't looking at this moment dwelling in the dangers that lurk according to the media and according 
to whatever reports we want to look to. We are looking to our Lord and Savior. Yes, we are mindful of things. Yes, we're careful. But we put all of our trust in the Word of God. And the Bible says that we look for a coming king. What a priceless inheritance we have in him, our chief shepherd. And just to wrap things up, Psalms chapter 23, 23 2, sorry, speaks of the cross that is the sacrifice of Christ. Psalms 23 speaks of the crook of the shepherd's staff that gives our souls direction. And Psalms 24, which is a future for us, it speaks of the crown of glory who, of, of our coming king. We have to know that our Jesus is the Lamb of God, the Savior of our sins. He is our current shepherd, but he's also our coming king. We have everything that we need in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have enough to drink. We have enough to be filled. We have anointing. We have security. We have protection. And we have a secure future in him. And I want to ask you this morning... Can you say that you have it all today, my friend? Can you say that your soul is content in its current condition? Can you say without a shadow of doubt that the Lord is your Savior and your shepherd? If he is not your Savior and your shepherd, today you can start a new journey and you can make a commitment to know the Lord Jesus Christ for who he is. And he wants to give you more than you could have ever realized or imagined. And brothers and sisters, if the Lord is already your shepherd, let's put more trust in him and rejoice in what he's done for us already. And there where you are, I'm going to ask you to lift up your hands with me. And let's go before the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, first for this word, my God, because you've placed in our hearts, my Father. It's so wonderful and it's so awesome to know that you are our shepherd that cares for us, Lord, every moment of our lives. We have all that we need in you. We have all that we could ever desire in you. You protect us. You nurture us. You, Lord, anoint us, my God. You fill us perpetually. And everything, my God, our heart could desire is in you. Right now, Lord, we also pray for those that are in need. Those people, Lord, that have not known you. They might have been atheists before. They might have been from a different religion. They might have been, Lord, Christians that have not, Lord, been, Lord, following your word, Lord, completely. But I pray for them as well. I pray that you lure them back in, Lord, by your staff by your loving staff, that you bring them right back in, Lord, to your fold, that you should protect them and love them and nurture them daily. I pray, Lord, Father, Lord, that you would unite your sheep, that they would walk by you, that they would, Lord, the Lord, they would, my God, rest in your presence daily. And I pray, my God, that we, Lord, would see many be baptized in your name, in Jesus' name soon. As soon, Lord God, as we're able, Lord, to get together, that we might see healings, that we might see, Lord Jesus, baptisms, we might see, Lord, unity, like like never before. May you do this thing. My, we know that you are at work right now. We know, Lord Jesus, that you are doing wonderful and marvelous things. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful that you were able to join us this morning. We are thrilled by the feedback we've been getting about uh, those that are participating and tuning in to our, our sessions, and we want you to continue doing so. If you do have any questions or you want uh, to get a hold of us, there's a couple ways to do that. That is, there's uh, through Instagram, through Facebook, you can send us a message there, or you can actually even contact the pastor, and he, all of his contact information is on sionhouseofprayer.com. Praise the Lord, everyone. I am so, once again, grateful to the Lord for life, thankful to God for his salvation, thankful to uh, for God for this venue that he has provided for us to speak his word to all of you. Doy gracias al Señor. Nuestros hermanos, hermanas, por su hermosa presencia, su salvación, que Él nos ha dado a nosotros uh, la manera para declarar su verdad, declarar sus promesas. Um, I do want to say for those of you that are, are watching us for the first time, uh, the Word of God says that faith comes by hearing and hearing that of the Word of God. And so we want to encourage you to continue tuning in every Sunday at 11 a.m. to hear God's word. Queremos a, a nuestros amigos que están mirando estos mensajes que sigan escuchando la palabra de Dios porque la palabra de Dios dice que la fe viene por el oír y el oír de la palabra de Dios. 
Y cuando nosotros escuchamos, oímos, recibamos palabra de Dios, es el camino que el Señor nos lleva a la salvación. By hearing and, and uh, meditating and abiding in God's word, that is what leads us to eternal salvation. I just want to take a moment in Jesus' name just to give you just a little bit of an update uh, in terms of what's going on in Orange County. Hermanos, quiero darles uh, una actualización de las cosas que están pasando ahorita en el condado de Orange. Est esta mañana yo hice un, un repaso de los datos, de la información, y miré los pacientes que están en el hospital, miré los pacientes que están en la unidad intensivo, y gracias a Dios, uh, parece que hay menos pacientes en esta semana um, que están en en el unidad intensivo y esto es muy importante porque yo pienso hermanos con el señor que estamos mirando un poco que las cosas están en el nombre de Cristo Jesús mejorando we see that the uh, data of the intensive care units here in Orange County that there has been a slight decline um, in patients in the ICU and that is very very good news We want to continue to pray for our families. Queremos seguir orando por las familias, por nuestra comunidad, for our community, uh, por nuestros vecinos, for our neighbors, um, all of our friends, nuestros amigos, todos uh, que, que están aquí en este estado, en esta nación, porque sabemos que el Señor está trabajando poderosamente. We know that God is working in powerful and in wonderful ways, and we look forward to what he's going to do. Tenemos esperanza porque el Señor sigue siendo cosas muy grandes. And the Bible says that he is holy and that he is enthroned in the praises of Israel. La palabra de Dios dice que, pero, dice, pero tú eres santo, tú que habitas entre los uh, del pueblo de Israel. Entonces vamos a seguir alabando al Señor. We're going to keep on worshiping God. Amen. He has given us this amazing opportunity. Él nos ha dado a nosotros esta oportunidad de estar unidos en el mismo Espíritu Santo. Aleluya. Alabando a su nombre. Lifting up our hearts and our hands as community of believers and knowing that he is in control. Sabiendo que el Señor es nuestro refugio. Hoy escuchamos que el Señor él es el buen pastor, que nosotros tenemos gozo mientras hay circunstancias difíciles. Nuestra confianza está en Él. Our confidence is in Christ, not in the circumstances around us, but we press forward in the powerful name of Jesus. We want to thank all of those, those of you that are contributing through a Venmo. Uh, queremos dar gracias al Señor por todo de ustedes, hermanos, amigos, que están dando por la aplicación Venmo. Y, y uh, es, esto es algo, hermanos, que es grande bendición para la obra de Dios, pero también estamos uh, respondiendo a las necesidades. We are responding to the needs of this ministry while we continue to have um, many costs, maintaining the temple, um, the building across the street, manteniendo el templo y también el edificio en el otro lado de Main Street. Uh, hermanos, que todavía es difícil ustedes entregar, uh, uh, por favor, llame el pastor, mandan un texto al pastor para que nosotros podamos servir a ustedes, para que ustedes puedan uh, uh, ser bendición y también un, recibir una bendición mucho más, pero porque todo que es de nosotros realmente no es de nosotros, viene de nuestro Padre Celestial. All that we have is not ours. But what we have is just because Jesus has given it to us. Right there where you're, ahí donde están, hermanos, vamos a cerrar los ojos, vamos a levantar las manos, y vamos a hacer una oración de victoria. We're going to give the Lord, hallelujah, offer him a, a prayer in victory. Cristo Jesús, adoramos a tu nombre, exaltamos, Señor, a tu nombre, porque tú eres rey, hallelujah, de reyes, tú eres el Señor de señores. Nuestra victoria viene de ti, oh Señor, hallelujah, tú estás en control. 
sol, tú eres alfa, tú eres omega. Oh Señor, aleluya, presentamos a todas las necesidades de esta nación, a todas las necesidades de tu pueblo. Aleluya, que tú eres el proveedor. Jesus, you are the provider of all things, and we commit all of the needs of today before your throne, before Lord Jesus, your feet, and we are thankful, God, because you are more than faithful. Gracias, Señor, porque tú eres más que fiel. Gracias, Señor, por la sanidad. Gracias, Señor, por, hallelujah, la salvación. Gracias, Señor, por la vida eterna. Jesus, thank you for salvation and eternal life. Gracias, Señor, por nuestros amigos que están ahorita recibiendo palabra de Dios. Jesus, thank you for our friends that are receiving your word at this hour. Hallelujah, que ellos, Señor, hagan un compromiso. Hallelujah, de servirte con todo su vida y todo su corazón. May those that are listening, God, begin to make a lifelong commitment to you with all of their heart and all of their mind and all of their strength. We thank you this day. Te damos gracias, Señor, en el poderoso nombre de Cristo Jesús. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. And we are going to dismiss here. Amen. In the joy of the Lord. God bless you.